This definitely sparked something in Aqua. Yo everyone, what's up? Your boy Al is here with episode 1 review of Ashinoko season 2 so let's get grooving. At first we see a crowd observing Tokyo Blade's 2.5D stage play. We then cut to Tokyo Blade's film set, where the director tells Aqua and Akane to take a 10 minute break from rehearsing. We are introduced to the actors before cutting to Ruby visiting Ai's grave. Ruby reflects on the four months since Bikamichi's first live show, noting their growing fan base. She mentions Aqua's new acting roles and ongoing relationship with Akane, and she remains determined to perform at the Dome for Ai's sake. Meanwhile, Aqua discusses Tokyo Blade's source material and the roles he, Akane, and Kana will perform in the stage play adaptation. Akane asks Aqua about performing with Kana, and Aqua says he's happy to have only a few scenes with her to avoid criticism. He admits to Akane that he's not passionate about acting, revealing internally that he only pursues it to uncover the truth about Ai. Well what can I say, getting reintroduced to all the characters made me realize how much I miss this anime, and I'm really glad season 2 is here. Also the animation is already looking better than the last season somehow. We see Aqua turn to Tashiro Kendaichi, the director of Tokyo Blade and leader of the Lala Lai Theater Company, wanting to get closer to him to uncover more about Ai. Aqua and the others resume practicing their lines. Tokyo Blade's executive producer Sumiaki Raida observes the actors with Kendaichi. Raida comments on the solid performances, and Kendaichi credits Masaya, the producer from season 1, for making good choices. Raida is most interested in the rivalry between Kana and Akane, but believes Akane will yield better results. Kendaichi mentions that Taiki Himkawa is another actor Raida should watch. After Kana and Taiki perform, Taiki invites Kana to dinner, and she accepts, wanting to ask him questions. She also invites Melt since they have scenes together. As Kana, Taiki, and Melt leave, Akane takes notes on Kana's impressive performance, wondering if her time as a Bikamichi idol contributed to her improvement. Kana and Taiki not holding back anything and shocking Aqua and Akane was really an interesting moment because it shows that no matter how much Aqua denies it, he is an actor at the end of the day. Also I think Akane looks better with short hair. Next we see that Kendaichi knows everyone is taking note of Taiki and Kana's performance and believes they all want to find ways to compete with those two. We flash forward to day three of rehearsals. Akane arrives at the studio, reflecting on rehearsals, how people treat them, and the overall operations. She notes that by the third day, people tend to form tight connections. Akane notices Aqua sitting alone and confronts him. Aqua confirms he's observing Kana, explaining that Kana adjusts her acting to match those around her. He mentions Kana lost jobs in the past due to her show off approach, but with Taiki around, she's probably bringing her A-game. Aqua warns Akane that Kana may outshine her in the stage play, which Akane isn't happy about. Aqua adds that he doesn't plan to outshine anyone with real talent. Akane performs her scene, and Kendaichi asks her to try again with more intensity. Akane performs again, and Kendaichi approves of this attempt. Aqua's character makes a lot more sense to me now, because I just realized he isn't honest with himself, and people like that tend to be pretty gloomy and depressed. Also I don't understand why Akane loses her confidence so fast. Moving on we see Kendaichi ask Kana to perform next. Akane sits on the sidelines and reflects on the stage play's script, arguing that her character, Princess Saya, doesn't have a pivotal role. She knows that Tsuruji and Tuki, Kana and Aqua's characters, are more popular than Saya. Akane realizes she must fill in the blanks to create a solid interpretation of Saya's character, but her desired interpretation conflicts with how Saya appears in the script. Akane notes Saya's differences from the source material, where Saya is a stereotypical character who is kind and conflicted about killing people. In the stage play adaptation, however, Saya is portrayed as a battle-hungry female. Although Akane isn't thrilled with this direction, she has grown fond of the character she's portraying. On the fifth day of rehearsals, Goa, the stage play's script writer, arrives and greets Kendaichi. 
Akane and Aqua take note of Goa's arrival and learn that Tokyo Blade's author will arrive later. Akane asks Aqua to share his opinion on the stage play's script. Akane tries a bit too hard to get into her character, but many actors tend to do the same, so I can kinda understand her. Also I'm not sure whether it's just me or this episode really made Akane look like a pushover. Then we see Aqua acknowledge that the stage play's script differs from the manga but argues it closely follows it and is much better than Sweet Today's script. He suggests Akane approach Goa about the script, but she's reluctant. Aqua confronts Goa and Kendaichi about the script, and Akane steps in to express her concerns about Saya's character writing. Goa understands and says he could adapt Saya's inner conflicts for the stage play, but it would consume much of the runtime and negatively affect other characters and audience retention. Goa emphasizes the importance of choosing the most pivotal elements but is willing to revise things since Akane is performing the character. Kendaichi disagrees, arguing that including Saya's sentiments would create unnecessary noise. Script writers changing a character into something totally different, just to adapt it into a shorter format, is really annoying, and as a weeb I hate it. In my opinion a character shouldn't be changed to the point where it becomes an entirely new character. At the end we see Kendaichi instruct Akane to portray Saya in a way that clearly depicts her interpersonal conflicts. Then, Yuriko and Tokyo Blade's author, Abiko Samjima, arrive on set. Akane tries to greet Abiko, but Abiko hides behind Yuriko, who explains that Abiko gets nervous around attractive people. Abiko observes Kana, Aqua, and the others performing and praises their efforts. However, she informs Raida and the staff that she wants the entire script revised. Mangakas and book authors need to be more like Abiko, because if they don't speak out then people will keep ruining their work. Also I forgot to mention, the opening song is nice, even though it's not as good as the idol one. Overall this was a great start to the season, and I can't wait for more. Nonetheless, thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description, until then see ya.